and Nerf people. Now, as you can see, I designed a lot of scopes for this thing. Got more and more complex and weird and eventually came up with this design. And the next thing to do was to actually make a profile of it. And that was quite easy. You just intersect it with the surface and then get the two surfaces to intersect with each other. This is in SketchUp. And once you've done that, you can just remove stuff and you'll find you've got a little wire frame. And so you clean that up because uh, there's, there's always going to be little bits left over all over the place. you just got to get rid of them. And once you've, once you've done that, you've got a wire frame and you clean that up as well. Just removing lines where you need them, adding them where you need them. And once you're ready, you just put a line in one little area and the whole thing fills. And once you've got that, you just make a contour, get rid of the outline, and then you can just um, use the surface tool to give it some thickness. Um, in this case, it was only about two millimeters. Once I'd done that, I'd just flatten it and then uh, export it uh, straight into um, Cura. And you're ready to go. You can just print that out. The reason I do it this way is it takes that, that particular, this print took 10 minutes to do. And I get the actual outline of the scope. And as you can see, the black one there is the old one. Didn't like it. Uh, and I've got the new scope. The eyepiece is higher, so it's a little easier to look through. And I thought it looked really good at the time. Now, the funny thing about this new scope, despite going all through all this design and development and printing it and getting the profile right and sorting it out, and uh, painting it and putting oh, two different logos on it and repainting it and getting it sorted. I put it on the, the rifle and with my genius it looks absolutely bloody ridiculous. It looks like a Disney, animated Disney character. So, yes, yeah, so I decided to do another design but by this stage my um, Ender 3 was playing up something chronic. I couldn't get anything to stick to the bed. I was having clogs and jams and... Uh, temperature runaways and all sorts of things so I designed a new one very quickly and simply on uh, SketchUp and printed it on my Anycubic Mono resin printer and it came out wonderful and it was just a case of assembly uh, I printed it in two halves front and back with a lip in the center and it was a case of uh, printing some lenses, which because I had uh, transparent green filament, that was very easy. Just printed some sheets of plastic to fit the actual scope. Uh, painted up the inside nice and black. Glued the front lens in, which that had a recess printed in it, which I filled with white, so it gave it like a, a, a crosshair sort of thing. Um, glued the two halves together and then spent about a week filling and sanding the seam so it couldn't be seen and for me that's a real commitment but I actually did it and it looks really good and I think the scope actually suits the rifle really well it, it has that sort of compound curve to it which I was trying to go for in the second one but just not as much and not as ridiculous looking and it really fits the body shape so I'm very very happy with it uh, and I'm pretty impressed with this little any cubing mono did wonders. Oh, in case you're wondering, I just glued the two f two parts of scoop together with um, epoxy resin, epoxy glue, and used epoxy putty to fill the gap most of it. Greetings, all those whose soul is possessed by Nerf. Mine isn't because the demons take up too much room. Yeah. Now. Um, I've laid out all the pieces on this table because I want to be able to move around it while I spray it. My little painting booth isn't really good for painting. So what I'm going to do is spray this stuff with, as you can see, I've sprayed everything with the red primer, which was a bit of a mistake, but hey, that was only supposed to be on the metal parts of the gun, of the blaster, which are up here, but it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray all these top cover pieces, the muzzle, the butt, and the butt stop, this grey primer. Um, that is then going to be top coated with white, which will be the final colour, but I'll do the clay in the resist just to have some wear and tear on the white. I'm not sure see how this is going to work. We'll see. Everything's an experiment. Use a mask when you're um, painting because, you know, lungs, etc. Or as Captain Xavier says, reasons. So, here we go.
Right, so that's it for the moment. Oop, missed one. Missed two. In case you're wondering, it's just two cans of the same colour. You get better coverage you use it that way. Right, now, that's it for the moment. Now, you may have noticed I painted very heavy on the pistol grip because that's going to be this grey, rubbery plastic, uh, whatever. Same as the buttstock, possibly. Um, and the rest is going to be white. So, let that dry and we'll move on to the next step. Right, good day, Nerfers. I'm in the process of masking things off before I go on to the rust application. So I've masked off the buttstock, which is going to be this grey rubber. And then I'll respray this with the red and put the rust on. And I've done the other side of this. So as you can see, I've masked all off just that, just sort of the surface area to make it look like a rubberized grip sort of thing. And then once that's done, I can then spray the, spray the dark red and do the rust again. So... Um, if you've never done masking, and honestly, it's really simple, and these Nerf guns make it simple because, because you've got things like that ridge there. So just put a piece of tape across the ridge and then just run your finger in it. So you, you can see where you've got to have the um, knife cut. And it's pretty straightforward. Now, I have to remember when I pull this off, which piece of tape to pull off. And I want to pull off this bit because I still want to paint this. So, just run the knife along the edge. There's all sorts of little nooks and crannies and ridges in these Nerf, Nerf blasters that make this sort of thing really easy. Check the other side just to refer how you did it. And then, now because I've put a little bit of um, body putty in here. The sides are just a little bit different looking, but doesn't worry me. Cut in there. Let's pull that off. It's pretty straightforward. So, what I'll do is I'll run some tape along here, along here, trim it along there, trim it along that line, and just the trigger guard. Very straightforward, simple, easy. And we can move on. For those of you new to my channel, I'll run through this again. This is how I do my rust effect. And it's pretty simple. Um, there's a uh, fellow online on YouTube, a Vim Fuego 2000. I'll put a link down below. I learned this off him. I don't do the full procedure he does, but it works out really well and it looks very good. So, got some rock salt here. And if you buy this from your local supermarket, you'll sometimes get a built-in grinder with it. Grind out some rock salt. Now, what you do is where you want rust, you spray some of your undercoat, in this case the Manor Red I use. And I know, I've been planning this out for months, what is going to be rusty and what is not. So I've got the top of the weapon here, which is going to be white look like a white plastic so this area is the area that's going to suffer from the rust and the wear of also the back and front of the pistol grip so what i'm going to do first you spray a little bit of the undercoat where you want a bit of rust to be and you sprinkle on some salt don't worry if it doesn't all go on or it goes on too heavy you can always adjust it later now, what I'm going to do now is just spray this area that was oversprayed grey. Now, because that's where the hand grips, there's going to be an awful lot of wear and tear there. So, I'm going to put along the edge, where it meets the rubberized pistol grip, there's going to be some rust spots. But on, this, on the bare centres, it's going to be worn down to the silver. So, you'll see the, the contrast, you'll see the wear and tear. Now at this point, this disappears up under this cover, this cover, but I still want to make sure it looks good. It's going to have a cable going up there as well, but you still got to do the background. Anything that looks like a vent, 
event implies there is some sort of airflow, which may mean heat exchange, which may mean wear and tear around the magazine release, which is no longer being used. And you can use a little bit of spray over the top just to tack it down. So I will mask this other one. Oh, I've done this too. Um, this is sort of the detail piece in the middle, some pipes, some air vents, and the company put their little logo on there. So I'm going to do that too because it's like a heat exchange area. What I'm intending to do is metallics in the pipes and the side, the white on the vents just to keep blending it in, and the Nova little sign will be probably you know uh, a decorative thing that the company's put on, which will be um, gold. You don't have to worry about if tons of this stuff falls off because there'll still be enough there. There we go. I won't put any on there because that'll be like a um, uh, anodized golden bit that won't corrode. Now, I'll just mask this side and spray the rest of this and I'll be back so shortly. Right, so all the salting is done in preparation for doing the rust and the silver. Just a couple of procedural things. I would tend to do this in an open area outside or something because the salt that's left over that's sprinkled everywhere it just rips water out of the, the atmosphere and everything gets wet. It, that's why I'm painting here because my painting desk is damaged. Good morning fellow sufferers of terminal nerfness. Now um, I thought I'd use this one part sort of to show you the whole detailed process. Now that's been painted with the grey because it's a, you know, it's supposed to be a plastic underneath. So then I've top coated with white. Now I want to make this vent metallic. So first thing is to mask off the vent. And it's really easy because you can just run it along a straight line at the bottom. Wrap that underneath so it doesn't go anywhere. You can tear it off and use it again. And I can hear a helicopter in the distance, and it's probably a water bomber, so we've probably got a fire around here somewhere. Don't be surprised if this video ends suddenly. Okay, so there's my piece mast. Now, take a close look at it, make sure the mask is right up against, butting up against where I want it to be. Because the less respraying, the better. So, so there's my undercoat. Now I can just sweep some of this salt off the table, sprinkle it all over it. This is a vent, so there's going to be a lot of heat in there for a lot of heat stress and a lot of wear. Perfectly happy with that. So I'll let that dry, put that aside and get to the black later. Now, on to <coughs> Thank you Jess. On to these parts. Now these have already coated and I'll put the, sil uh, the salt on. Right, so the next step is put on the silver where there's wear, where the paint's worn off. And of course, the pistol grip's going to be very heavily worn, both inside and outside. These little metal bits along the body of the weapon, anywhere a metal part might have touched something, rubbed against something, whatever. So what you do is just spray it in liberally. This one's almost empty. You don't have to go over the whole thing, just you want to hit where there's some of this, the uh, salt. Because when you, when you take the salt off, when you take all the 
rub the salt off, you'll have a spot of red surrounded by a bit of worn silver after we do the next step, which I'll show you in a little while. So I'm going to put a, a fair amount of silver in here because there'll be a lot of heat stress and wear around there. And remembering I've got those plates that are supposed to look like carbon fibre. So, a lot on the front. I haven't painted the top, of course, because it, it gets covered. Down there. Now this area is going to be wrapped with a bandage, partially to hide the big gap in the bottom of this, but also to, to make it look a little bit more realistic. You know, the, it's supposed to be where you grip it because the weapon itself gets too hot, but it's still too hot. So if you've been in the military, you'll understand that sometimes they give you stuff that isn't quite right. So this is all pipes and stuff. The top of this is going to be like a gold detailed accent piece, but the pipes I'll give a heavy pipes and air vents I'll give a heavy uh, weathering to and then come back with the clay in a minute. With this heat we've got in here at the moment, it's gonna, this is going to dry really quickly. It's only, it's still before 10 o'clock in the morning and it's about almost 30 degrees I believe. So there's going to be a lot of weathering on the bottom pit there because that is constantly contacting the ground and there'll be the sling there. This is almost dry, I can spray the silver but I'll give it a little while longer. You want to get a bit of silver where there's the salt so you can get this rust effect. But you don't. Have, you can also spray silver where there isn't any salt. I wouldn't be surprised if the first bit is pretty much dry. And the first paint I put with there, yeah, that's pretty much dry. Metallics just dry so fast and when it's warm they dry even, dry even faster. Now what I've got here is a little old bucket full of dead flies and other stuff but also full of what's called liquid clay, clay slip and I've just put some water in there and it's starting to slate down turning back to sort of liquid gooey clay and this is what I use for my mask and the mask is basically a, a resist surface you put on so when you paint it that area that it's applied to doesn't get any paint yeah. and I actually wet this down yesterday and it's so hot in here it's dried out again so it's going to take a while to soften so we'll let that soften and I'll come back in a little while. Right, so it's about 20 minutes later and this clay has got nice and soft. Now, what you want to do is apply the clay where you want the wear and tear to be. Like, as I said, the back of the handle and front of the handle is going to be have pretty heavily wear. So I've got a pretty, pretty big uh, makeup brush and just smoothing it right And you can see there's far too much water in this clay because it's uh, the tension in the clay is um, sorry the tension in the water is causing it to bead. So I just remembered an old um, painting trick, which is a drop of methylated sorry a drop of mineral turps in the water should um, break the surface tension. So there's a screwdriver. Okay. I should get rid of the surface tension in the clay. Really, you want the clay, clay like thick cream. Yeah, there we go. So, I've found over time that um, the thickness you put on the clay, well, not the thickness, the amount of water in the clay when you put it on can actually let some paint through. So, you do get a gradation effect. So, where I want just little bits of wear, you just very do you're very careful and controlled. Now this is going to have a cable coming up, which is going to wear here and cause a bit of rust. And there's a bit there on that edge. And this is where I need to get one of my smaller brushes and actually use the right end of the brush. And even where there's just the red undercoat, you can highlight a bit of that too. Because the paint has to wear through with the undercoat, then to the metal. So, right areas like this, this um, vent up the front, I'm going to dab a lot of clay on. This is going to be partially covered by the the top cover, but after. When I'm doing the detail, those light holes will be picked out in black and then the smoke will be added. So, you know, at this stage, it doesn't really matter how messy you are or even how many mistakes you make because you can always go back and repair it later.
Now, here is what we did earlier. So that's white underneath. It's got my um, undercoat on it. So I'm going to put a lot of clay on it now. Because it's going to be a lot of work. And don't worry about the water in the clay dissolving the salt. It really doesn't because this stuff is um, rock salt. It takes a lot of water to dissolve it. And by the time it starts dissolving, the clay is dry anyway. And the heat we got here today, it's going to be dry very quickly. So this is this is a good demo one because once that's dry, I could even do it right now because the paint is not going to be affected by the clay. And as long as I don't hold the can too hard, it's not going to blow the clay out of the way. I can paint that black and then come back to it. And it's basically wash it off, scrape off the salt, the salt and the clay, and it's done, automatically weathered. Uh, okay, we've got a few other bits. The magazine catch, very heavily used, of course, because it's one place that the human hand contacts. The heat vent, intake, outtake, whatever. It's got a temperature fluctuation, so it's going to affect whatever's on top of it. A little bit around there. And that's it, because the rest of the glass is like a plastic, which I might have to start painting pretty soon. Okie dokie. Okay, so here's my uh, demo piece. It's had the red undercoat, the white base, which is the top coat. I know it seems in reverse, but that's the way it works. It's masked off. So the red undercoat, the salt put on, the silver spray, the clay's done. Now just the black for the top. That's it. So, when that's dry, I can strip that off and see how this one goes. So, I'll just take the tape off first. Because once you pull the tape off, you usually pull a lot of stuff off with some of the, the um, salt and clay will come off with the tape. Sorry about that. So, looks pretty banal at the moment, but give it a quick scrape. There we have a well weathered vent. And I can still feel some of the salt underneath the paint that's stuck there. I've never worried about it, not going to do anything, it's perfectly inert and it adds to the crustiness of the look. Now when it comes to the actual black wash, that white surround, that white border will be toned down quite significantly and because this is a white bodied blaster, I'm going to do a black wash and a brown wash just to really dirty it up. But there we go. Alright, moving on. that's it so next is painting the other parts white putting it together weathering it up really quite simple morning nerve afflicted um, and it is morning it's just before seven here uh, the cicadas in the trees tell me it's going to be another 40 degree day so the weathermen have got it right so I'm getting some work done before it gets too hot but last night I did printed this out which is just a little cup for the magazine so it doesn't actually look like a Nerf magazine so it's um, pretty cool eh? so that can be painted up and I can um, you know this will be like a, um, a charging cell and I'll put some you know electronic doodars and details on that and um, and you could use you put them put on different magazines different size cells whatever now Thing I'm going to do before it gets way too hot is I meant to put um, some masking on this part here to leave this grey when it's painted so it appears rubberized so it's like, like um, not as hard as metal for your hand so you don't get hurt or anything so I'm going to do that and that will be very simple because I'll probably just mask 
along this line, along that line, and down there, and just leave the whole thing grey. Um, and it, it, it's just a, an easy way to include detail is just with paint. So, yeah, take that off there. And what I'm going to do is trim each individual piece of tape as I go because I don't want to do it all and try and tape it. One, it'll be very thick. And two, it could be hard to see where it is. So you've got to... Yeah, it's not that easy to see even just one layer of tape. What I probably should have done is drawn the curve and then followed it with a pencil. So, next one. Okay, so that's reasonable. Um, one thing you can do is to make this like it looks like a separate piece, put little um, uh, shapes, just like points where it clips in and, is pushed in or something so I might try that. Now I'll put the, the tape on and it's reasonably good it's a bit a bit off here but not worried but what I want to do is put um, like a little half circle at a couple of spots that look like where you know it might have the rubber plug, plug on the back of this piece that plugs into the body so luckily I found these little stick on dots and the stick is still reasonably good so what I'm going to do is just like one there. And whack one there. I'm only using half of them. And I'll probably put one up here too. That will help to hide that mess. So this will so when this is painted white, this bit will stay grey. There we go. So so that's going to look grey with sort of insert points. So I'm going to do the same to the other side. In fact, I'm going to hope, hopefully I'm going to do better to the other side. And uh, we'll move on. Back soon. They're all lifting up. So what I'm going to do is get the white paint out straight away and paint this piece. Now I cannot recommend you get one of these highly enough. Um, used to choke myself on the fumes in here even small things like that this thing I just painted um, now you can't even smell the fumes you know they're 80 90 dollars in Australia don't know how much they're in America but they're well worth it so let's continue The duck to the dog. Uh, Got to get this one in the same spot. There we go. 